Blog Talk Radio. Hey, okay, Sports City, I got it from here. The calling number is 929-477-2759. We got you locked and loaded for the next 90 minutes or so here in the kitchen. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you are here with the chefs. Sports City, this is my last mm-hmm. show. I'm not going to do another show after this. You know, I'm joking. I'm joking. But um, we got a lot of big news going on in Sports City as well as in the sport world. So we're going to get into this as best as we see fit possible, calling out of the state of the cutthroat region itself. We have my counterpart, my sidekick, my co-host, the villain. Barry, welcome to the cooker. How are you feeling this evening? Villain. Absolute power corrupt, absolutely. Get to get the villain surrounded, son. Yes, yes, I'm in the building. I'm here. I'm happy to be here. I had, a, I had a lot of topics to talk about today, and then, you know, like the Wolves bomb just went crazy on us, and we just we had to pivot. It's a crazy day in sports, crazy day, crazy couple of days. How you feeling, baby? I done took off this blazer, loosened up my tie, stepped inside the kitchen. Timeless is alive. I'm just happy to be here, like you said. Some big news going on in the sport world, big news going on with Sports City, for real, for real, Sports City. So, like I said, this is this – is, I mean, it's still timeless. I mean, I, I, I'm a rock fan, so Jigga said never change. So I ain't gonna change, but you're gonna see some some grown man stuff. You know, I got I got to get on my grown man. But y'all seen this for about eleven, twelve years now. I've been doing this for so long. But I got another person calling into the the cookout himself at the grill. We got Aaron Simmons in the building. Welcome to the cookout. How are you feeling this evening? Man, that's your boy Sirius repping now four one two on the seven oh three. I I don't even know where to begin. I, I can't even really intro myself <laughs> like I want to, man, without getting into these dishes, man. Let's work. Okay, so I I, I kind of want to like I don't know how to do this. Like, do I go to the like like that's like meat and potatoes? How we we really get to go into this? Like, I kind of want to save it, but it's like it's so hot of a situation. Like, I want to go to it. You know what? I'm going to go to it. So here in the tri-state of the United States of America, that's right, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. And it's like it's, it's, it's always some crazy stuff going on out here. If it's these bologna and cheese Yankees or the bologna and cheese Mets or the bologna and cheese Knicks wow. or the bologna and cheese Islanders, you know, now, now we got the Nets here because, you know, the Nets made the move from Jersey, and that's still on tri-state, you know what I'm saying? But now the Nets not only have their issues with the point guard, they go down deep in the heart of Texas and go get Jimmy Beard. And the crazy part about the situation is the game that took place last night, um, it, it, it was a massacre, and um, some statements were made at the end of the game, and I want to get to them as much as possible, but um, – there was a portion in that game where I really felt like Harden gave up. And I've been around basketball all my life. That was the first ball my father put in my hands when I was three. And um, knowing the switch and the transition, knowing how the defensive matchup is going to happen, Harden had the ball at the wing, and it's him and Anthony Davis. He gave him his little two-step and got past him. Now, interesting enough, you know Anthony Davis is a shot blocker. He could have just dunked the ball and got it to the rim or went with his right hand. He went up with his left hand at the glass, and Anthony Davis is behind him. Anthony punched it so hard off the glass. It was like, I felt like he whispered to Anthony, like, I'm going to let you punch this shot. Like, that's how I feel like the way that the play went. And knowing that he gave no effort to get back down the court, knowing that he just got his shot blocked so crazy, it's like, okay, I know that he's not there. And then he made his statements at the end of the game, and that's where the floodgates open, and I'm going to get these guys in front of this grill as best as possible. And, you know, the reaction that, you know, John Wall had, as well as uh, DeMarcus Cousins. I want to hear your guys' take on it. Uh, yeah, I got to say Aaron for last. So, so Barry, your thoughts on what's going on with the moves between so many teams that make this blockbuster trade happen in 24 hours, within, let me say it the right way, within 24 hours. But please have at it at the cookout. Yeah, I mean, how can you save that dish for last? I mean, um, it, it's the it's the hot dish of the day. I mean, um, I just finished up a little um, blog piece talking about it, and I said in my blog that, you know, on a day where the sitting president of the United States was for a second time in his presidency years, which has never happened, 
it's dwarfed this mega deal that just went down. You know, we talked about it. We've all been talking about it for a long day. We were coming in here to talk about how Harden um, quit on the team, the press conference afterwards, and, you know, how, you know, basically he can't be on that team anymore. And then, lo and behold, the, the trade picked up steam, and now he's a part of the net. Um, I, I meant that it's it's ironic that the guy that's the voice of reason is DeMarcus Cousins because this guy um, is, you know, notoriously a hothead, gotten more technicals than, you know, Jerry's got curls. I mean, it's the, the guy basically said what we all said, is oh, that what Harden said. And I don't think Harden meant it personally. I think it was a spade of spade to say, I want out of here. To basically go out and say, this team just isn't that good enough. I mean, that's basically a declaration that I don't want to be here anymore. And, and, and that's what happened. They had to make the deal. You had two, not, I don't say the Rockets were desperate, but they they were basically confined to the fact that they weren't going to have them around the team until a deal got done. The Nets, on the other hand, um, had to sell their soul and then some to get Harden, uh, trading away uh, Allen and Levert, um, you know, getting, you know, damaging that chemistry on the team to get a guy that's a perennial all-star and MVP candidate. And, and they need him because Kyrie's MIA, which is another subject for another day. And, and you know, they're struggling right now, four and six in the last ten games after starting 2-0 and all, looking like world beaters, uh, especially that Christmas Day uh, blowout of, 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 the, of the Warriors. So both teams are in, in a, a position where they needed to pull the trigger and they made it happen. And, you know, you know kudos to – um, the Pacers and the Cavs, who didn't get slighted. The Pacers uh, moved Oladipo, who they didn't probably have in their plans in the future anyway. They, were good. they weren't going to sign him back. They got, um, you know, flipped him for Levert. Good for them. And, and the Rockets got Oladipo back as a player that they can try out for a year. If it doesn't work, um, you know, they can move on. No harm, no foul. They still got picks. Um, but putting Oladipo with Wall and, and, and Boogie, maybe that sparks his team to to get to um, to better to better horizons. But I think it was it's a big day for the NBA, and I think all teams involved uh, made the move that is going to help them in the long run. Barry, that's interesting that you say it like that. I'm like, I didn't really okay. Oladipo may have been a big name with the Pacers, but I didn't mm-hmm. really feel like it was like a, a a set in stone fit for like the next two to three, two to four years. Like, I really felt like Oladipo still was not a fit with that team. And um, mm. felt like him going to Houston might help them because he, he needs to find a fit in a, a, a city of that type of caliber. Yeah, Indiana is, is the the one state that they call like a basketball state. But And he went to school there and he had a following. But I, I really feel like it was a force. And um, with him going to Houston, I mean, it's a legit system where you got a point guard and a two guard and not – two different point guards that um, one could be a shooter. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I feel like this can actually work out and, and put Houston right back in a, a situation where they are a team to be concerned with. So I like that move. The one thing that I did want to see with Brooklyn, if they did get Harden, it was like I wanted them to keep a lot of that team together or that bench because I do like Levert. I like his game. And uh, Jared Allen is their shot shot blocker or their rim protector. And they had to get rid of yeah. him to make that work. And it's like they're putting their defensive anchorage on DeAndre Jordan, and he's not that guy. I mean, he has hop. He's in the paint to be 6'11", but a lot of people test him, and they get to the rim on him. So it, it's like that. that's the one thing that I'm questioning right now is, is do they really legit have a big in there to, you know, be part of that defensive cavalry? That's what has me thinking. But, um, Mr. Simmons, your thoughts on the things that happened – within the organization that you follow for the past 24 hours of getting this move made between four different teams and watching Jimmy Beard leave the organization. You know, gentlemen, I'm not going to waste too much time, you know, with the, with the soliloquy and, you know, trying to be, um, trying to be PG, so to speak. I pretty much said exactly how I felt about James Harden on numerous occasions on this network on the platform, my social media platform, so I'm not going to rehash that. But what I will say is this. It's about time something got done. Um, I, I, I didn't want him suiting up. 
Um, mm. And so at the end of the day, um, we need to either, you know, handle the business or, or, or get off the pot. Um, a lot of people have made speculations that that uh, yesterday's antics and yesterday's comments was the final straw that broke the camel's back. I, I, I don't subscribe to that because what James Harden said was actually correct. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have enough to compete. We, 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 we looked lethargic. You know, we were, you know mm-hmm. LeBron James was, LeBron James was, you know, making bets with a sideline and hitting Steph Curry threes, you know, looking the opposite direction. Like, where's the competition? Where's the heart there? And, you know what I'm saying? And, again, I understand that James Harden is a hot button and a hot topic, but nobody else on that squad really competed. Um, against the Los Angeles Lakers. So I'm not going to sit here and say, you know what, because he said that, this is what happened. You know, it it sure as heck didn't help. Um, But, again, I'm glad it's over with. I'm glad it's done. Um, As a Houston Rockets fan, you know, you can call it a rebuild. You can call it a retooling. You know, one thing I do know is that John Wall, you know, doesn't have a long-term deal. Victor Oladipo, the the guard we just acquired, didn't have a long term deal. We have virtually a, a, a smorgasbord of picks in the next couple years to go out and acquire, uh, you know, talent via the, the draft. We can use them kind of like the Oklahoma City Thunder um, have the ability to use them as bargaining chips to get other players and other free agents and and, and use them as other trades. Um, we all, I, I'm not naive to, to the fact that P.J. Tucker is more than likely going to be the next person to leave um, because he and James Harden were attached at the hip. Um, so now that we've moved, we moved James Harden, uh, P.J. Tucker um, is more than likely going to leave because he's not going to be happy. He said some things this offseason about not being wanted and not feeling like he's been, you know, wanted or whatever the case may be, so he's gone. So at the end of the day, I'm excited that it's over. Um, I wish uh, James Harden the best of success um, in Brooklyn. Um, they've kind of pushed all their chips in the middle with a like championship or bust, so to speak. Um, and I honestly think this reeks, like my man Nas said privately, this honestly reeks of desperation. You know what I'm saying? You have no idea what you're getting or when you're getting uh, Kyrie back. You know, th- maybe this. You know, you know, prompt something. You know, come back to the team sooner than he may have wanted. They don't know, but at the end of the day, they have to play ball. You know, they look good tonight against a, a, a bewildered New York Knicks team, but you know, they have championship aspirations. Um, and getting a caliber of player of James Harden definitely helps their cause. Um, so salute to them. But it's, it's onward and upward for us as the Houston Rockets organization. Um, you know, I, I salute. What John Wall said, who's only been here uh, for, you know, 10 days, 10 games, so to speak. I, I salute what DeMarcus Cousins said um, because it was real. You know, I mean, disrespectful comments made by James Harden, um, not just yesterday, but just in general. You know, keep in mind, this, wasn't, this whole ordeal was not, you know, consumed in a vacuum. You know, this is stuff that's been building up since we uh, subsequently got bounced out of the second round of the playoffs a year ago in the bubble. You know what I'm saying? So, and then James Harden showed up the camp out of shape, showed, you know, showed his behind, went to the strip club and the, to the parties without the mask and was doing things that were not safe and not smart, uh, all the while damaging the organization. Um, so, I mean, we, we, we've all watched it unfold. So, I'm, I'm glad it's over. Um, and, again, good wins. Okay, I mean, and it's tough to see this go down because, um, like, personally between me and Mr. Simmons, like, we, we go at it because of the brotherhood and the, the aprons that we put on on a weekly basis. But I never wanted to see Harden leave OKC. He went to Houston. I'm like, this is a team that's his. Like, they gave him the keys to not only the organization but the city. And um, he even said it in his, his quotes and saying that, I love the city of Houston, don't get him wrong, but he didn't think it was fixable. And and then he got up and walked out, and it's like, wow, that's the way you left the organization. And I feel the same way that I felt in 2012 that Sam Presley tried to put a deal in front of him to keep all of them together, and he came up with a $13 million deal per year, and Harden wanted 14.5. And it's like, 
Think about the legacy. Think about what you're going to do. And he carried that same demeanor with him to Houston with one gun and trying to take on all of these teams, let alone in the Western Conference and going to war. And now that Russell walked away and saying it's, it's crazy to see how that organization treats James Harden and then seeing it all unfold within the same season of Russ leaving, he left. And then looking at the both of them and their demeanor in this sport, it's like everybody gets to leave when they want and be babies and get up and leave the organization high and dry. And then how do teammates look at you at the end of the day? How do other teams look at you at the end of the day? And I know it's cool for, you know, Steve Nash being a first-year coach, even though he has Dan Tony there. And knowing Dan Tony knows the chemistry between – uh, Durant, especially Kyrie and James Harden, because I uh, during that uh, the, the past Olympics, I watched the way that these guys practice, and these guys have like a brotherhood, especially Kyrie and Harden. So they kind of got what they wanted. But seeing the situation that's happening with Kyrie, I'm hoping that Kyrie somehow drops everything and comes back. But they're saying that they don't expect him to be back within this week. So I'm wondering how the league or that organization in Brooklyn handles the situation with Kyrie to, like, make this a situation that Brooklyn is a powerhouse in the Eastern Conference because, you, I mean, it'd be cool to just see Harden and Durant go at it. But if you see the three of them, it's like, okay, now we got somebody that can compete and let alone go up against LeBron, being LeBron and Durant again, if they can get that to happen. But the East will be no pushover because it's so top-heavy. But this this is the situation that's set up right now with what, uh you know, life after Maury, life after Harden, life after Westbrook, leaves that Rockets organization in a question mark, but they do have, you know, good pieces still there. So, uh, and and right now, as we're speaking, uh, Brooklyn is taking care of business in the garden. I mean, are we surprised? But that, that, no, I mean, they're winning by, (laughs) you know, I'm I'm just trying to, you know, Tell you they just want to yeah, just to try to you know, stick to my thin, stick to my thin. That's fine. Wait, Listen, hold on. I don't. I, I don't agree, cut you I off. Agree, I don't cut I you off. You I, don't, I don't cut you off. I don't cut you off when you talk. Like I don't do this to you. Why? why the don't funny do thing of the funny thing about this is, like, even though Brooklyn is beating the brakes off of the Knicks right now, you know what? Shout out to Julius Randle because this dude here, you know mm. what he? I, I remember when he got drafted. And just watching how he has, you know, morphed his game into let's be what I'm watching tonight. Um, it's nothing short of spectacular. But with that being said, if you're a Knicks fan and I'm talking to one currently, you have no business losing this game. None. Mm. You know what I'm saying? KD's out there by himself. By himself. Um, and they get good contributions from everybody, all nine that are available to dress and play. Steve Nash is getting contributions from them, and this is literally in New York. This is in this is in Madison Square Garden. This is in the garden, and you, you, you're getting ran out of your own gym. Yeah, I think that nobody's there to see it. If if a tree falls and nobody's there to see it, doesn't make it. I mean, listen, ESPN's there. I, listen, serious, they have no offense. Outside of Julius Randle, they can't score. They don't have a point guard that can run the offense. So, wait, whoa, 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 You said, you, you, you know, not even Alfred Payton and Alfred can't score the ball. R.J. Barrett is having a good start to this season right now. You, you slow down. They can score the ball. No, but they don't they have can. an offense. They don't have an offense, CP. And you, and I know you don't watch them as much as you watch them against the Thunder and you watch them tonight, but I watch them. They don't have an offense, and they can't shoot threes. So, you know, it, 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 you can't win like that in, in this league. You know, they look at the, look at who they passed up. Listen, I like getting OB top, and I, I was here on the show loving that. But, I mean, you know, passing on the point guard that just put up, what, 15 points in the fourth quarter for the, um, the kick? I mean, how do you – I, I – I can't. I can't. I don't want to make you frustrated. I'm, I'm trying. If you'd have just let me continue, we'd have been past this. But you want to go ahead and get frustrated. This is <laughs> no, we can move on. Moving thought... on. Moving on. Nobody wants to. This, ratings will go down if we keep talking about the Knicks. So let's let's move on. I, I'm not trying to. I I I, I said Brooklyn's <laughs> taking care of things in the garden. And you, you stopped but that. Can, I said who cares about that? Can, can I ask you guys a question? Because yeah. I'm curious. Seriously. Um, I'll, TP, I'll ask you first, and then Sarah can, can clean it up. What is Harden's legacy in Houston? 
Wow, that's a very good question. Um, uh, I'm going to say this. He carried them to the Western Conference Finals a couple times. So, like, they can't disrespect his name. You know what I'm saying? But the way that he left is heavily questionable. They, they can't disrespect his name, but the way that he walked away from the organization, and, and I, I hate to say it like this, this is the storm that he created. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, like I, like he wanted Clint Capella to go, and him and Clint Capella were – I, I like the way that they worked that pick and roll. Like, it was tough. Like, you, you had to pick your poison. If you want to stop Harden from getting the rim, foul him, or watch him just lead a ball in the air, Clint Capella just dunk on y'all. So, it's like he wanted Clint Capella to go because it didn't work with him, Russ, and Clint Capella. Then Russ left immediately. Like, Russ was like, I don't like the way things are leading, uh, leading toward James Harden. And it's only James Harden. Then, like, two, three weeks later after Russ leaves, it was like Harden, like, well, get me out of here. And it's like, whoa, like – so, uh, at the end of the day, I think they have to respect him. I, he might be one of the statues that will go out in front of Houston because he was so young when he got there. He played, what, eight and a half seasons there and um, put up some heavy numbers, an MVP or two. Um, I mean, the season that he put together, so they, they have to respect his name. But the way that he left, I, I heavily questionable. Yeah, I mean, see, here's the gotcha. See, hey. Here's where I differ from that, okay? Mm-hmm. Thomas, I, I, I'm coming when you live, bro. Remember back um, a couple years ago when Kevin Durant left OKC? Um, and, and you remember the, the, the beef that ensued between uh, KD, um, Mr. Westbrook, and, and the fans of Oklahoma City? I think y'all called on. Uh, I think the word was cupcakes. Cupcakes, um, yeah, cupcakes and, and snakes. They, they call yeah, them both. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's what's going to be on display um, with the Houston Rockets fans, um, myself being one, um, and, and, and the organization. We understand that at the end of the day, uh, this, this, this is business, um, and you know. This is the part of my my, 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 my my conversation where you and I kind of stepping in the same puddle. Um, because what he did for Houston, um, you know, we, we, we respect that, you know. Um, however, the stuff that went on behind the scenes and how um, you literally – stripped us of of assets we we wanted to make you happy um so we literally like you alluded to team t gave you the key to the castle so to speak um and and and, and you do us like this um i i just i just i just have a hard time looking back on your, your time and Houston with, with fond memories. Now, again, time heals all wounds. I'm sure uh, when KD enters uh, OKC at this point, um, he's not met with as much aggression or much booze or whatever the case may be. Um, but it's going to be significant amount of years before James Harden is ever able to walk back into Houston um, and be greeted with, um, anything other than expletives um, and, and, and things of that nature because you can't leave us like that, you know what I'm saying? People ask me that same question about um, Antonio Brown and, and things of that nature, um, you know, how is Antonio mm-hmm. Brown's legacy um, at, with, with, with Pittsburgh? Um, and, and, and it's the same thing. You know, um, Antonio Brown can't come into Pittsburgh and be greeted with, you know, signs of congratulatory remarks and things of that nature um, because of how he left. So, um, again, time heals all wounds, but at the end of the day, bruh, don't let the door hit you with a good Lord split you. Um, and uh, we'll see you when we see you, but I- I'm I'm glad it's over. Um, I'm so glad it's over. I repeat, I'm glad it's over. It's <laughs> free at last, free at last. Listen, I agree with both of you guys. I, I mean, and it's kind of weird because it's like, you know, the 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 last the last image is what you're going to remember. Obviously, I mean, that's a good time. The MVP and 
you know, you know, scoring ch- championship and all that good stuff. You're just going to remember how he left town, how he came into this season out of shape. You know, I seriously sent the picture and I almost fell out of my chair looking like Mark Henry. But it's the truth, I mean, you know, he come in with like Kendrick Perkins 2.0. <laughs> And it's like, what are you going to do? Like, that's what you remember, like, not the good times. And, you know, he's going to get scrutinized for running good players out of town, whether it was Howard or Chris Paul or, you know, Russell. You know, they traded the farm to get Russell. And then, you know, a year later, ah, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, that's what you're going to remember from this guy. So, you know, it's it's tough. It, you know, the guy, you know, made himself into a, a MVP caliber player in Houston and then unfortunately didn't end the way that you wanted it to end, Kiki. Okay, well I I um I grew up I'm an eighties baby, you know what I'm saying? And um, you know, it's a song from like the sixties, seventies, man. And it's so hard to say <laughs> goodbye. To yesterday. Yeah, Coach I got, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got to do it, man. Because he would do it to me. He would do it to me, Sports City. Like, like y'all don't know. Like, if something bad happened to the Lions, the Twins, the Thunder, the Rangers, like, seriously, be the first one cooking. I don't care if it's my phone, my post, my, my pages, Wait, calling, whatever he's doing. You're calling to be a hockey fan? Oh, 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 I'm claiming. Claiming? Uh, no, seriously, is Aaron Simmons. I'm not, I'm not. Him, I'm me. I'm I'm the dude with the, the blazer. You know what I'm saying? Now the right. fact of the matter is he'll uh he'll start with me. So I say I save my stuff for the kitchen where I can hit him where it hurt. You know what I'm saying? And I know I got him cheesing right now. But the fact of the matter is, I'm not gonna lie, even though I pick with him and do this, I was wearing them same doggone shoes in two thousand and sixteen. When when they went when the Thunder were up three one on the Warriors, I'm like, yo, these do seventy three and nine. Like like, we about to go to the finals and upset the world. And then it's like KD went to sleep. Russ was going crazy on Curry, and I'm like, wait wait, K, you you supposed to be the MVP? Like like, wait, what's going on? And they lost all three of them games, and then K was whispering to Curry here at the end of the game. I'm like, yo, what is he talking about? Three months later, he like, yo, I'm going to go to state. I'm like, you. Serious? Like 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 what? And and I was just so and still to this day I don't forgive K D like like I, I forget it. I forget it, but it's like and I'ma let him like live, like that's his life, but like like he went to do that to ring chase and then um I guess the I wanna say more of the attention went towards Steph Curry and them still. He didn't like that and he left and you know, he went to Brooklyn now as he where he is now. So I understand, I get it. I don't like to see players leave my team and I still feel the same way about how it happened in 97, the way Sean Kemp left the Sonics. Like, they went to the finals, and then next – and it's crazy that the same organization did that again. They went to the finals. They lost to the Bulls in six, and then next thing you know, Kemp is in Cleveland. I'm like, wait, what? Like, like just, just watching it happen, it's like, y'all ain't trying to Yo, sign this dude. That, go goofiest... that was the goofiest-looking thing I've ever seen in my life. Kemp in Cleveland or Sean Kemp in Orlando. Good God, that was wild. Uh, and, and, uh, at, 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 this, at this point in that NBA Finals again, and, and they lucky it was Jordan because we had six foot three Hersey Hawkins and Michael Jordan. Yeah, thanks a lot, Sonics organization. Like, give us somebody. <laughs> and, and, and Nate McMillan, and, and Nate McMillan was hurt, so like that's the only defender that's six five that, could, and he's one of the Defensive Player of the Year caliber type of players that could have D Jordan. We can't get nobody to D Mike, and he's burying Hersey. I'm like, man, Hersey's out there for a three point shot. That's it. Like, we and that was the tough part. But he was averaging thirty points on Pip. I mean, not Pip on Rodman, and you get rid of him. Like, it's like, Rodman, and, yeah. and just watching this on this organization had me going crazy. So I, I get it. And watching the business of the NBA, that's the one thing that rips the heart out of fans or diehard fans, and just watching some of the best players go to another team and try to make it happen, or if they win a ring there, it's like, well, that's what they intended to do. So I, I get it at the end of the day. I know where he is, you know, inside the fandom heart and mind. But I don't know. And, and you know, if they don't win, like, let, let's just say that Harden is there for the duration of his career trying to chase a ring with KD and Kyrie, and they don't get it done. It's like, how many times do the Rockets get to laugh at that situation, let alone if the Rockets do get to the finals or the Western Conference finals without Harden, or have a successful season without Harden one one way or another, 
it's like, is it a win-win for Houston? Is it a lose-win situation? I, I don't get it. So this is all up in the air. But as of today, this is one of the rawest topics out there, and I, I had to get this one on the grill. Okay, so we are going to move from that because there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, I want to see, and, and I hate to, like, go backtracking, um, I want to see how you guys feel about how the national championship went down on Monday night. Uh, we're two days removed. We we haven't spoke about it. We picked our teams and or, or the team to win that game, and I think we all went Alabama, but I was the one saying if Ohio State wins, I would not be surprised because it's a, it's a city in the state of Nevada, and, um, you know, they pull a lot of strings. But um, this thing got out of hand quickly. <laughs> and um, I'm watching this game with, with a friend of mine, and um, I said it in the kitchen, and I'm going to say it while I said it while it happened. I said if this goes down the right way, Saban needs to release the hounds and go get fields. <laughs> and they did it, and they, they, in one portion of the game they sacked him, and he was reaching for those ribs. I'm like, that's the way you got to get them. And it was like they were playing ginger, even though early the running back Sermon was out after the first series, and I think that took a chunk out of their running game. But they still had uh, Master Teague back there. Master was doing his thing running the ball as well. But it wasn't the same potency that they had when they beat the crap out of uh, Clemson. So I want to see how you guys feel about that national championship. But after half, I mean, once halftime came, that game was virtually over. Um, Sirius, I'll come to you first. Your thoughts on the Alabama-Ohio State matchup? You know what, gentlemen, I, I, I'm a Penn State fan, okay? Um, so with that being said, um, anytime I get to get a couple of chuckles in at, at the expense of my rival, <laughs> the nemesis, I was I was chuckling. Oh, my, I enjoyed every little bit of that. Um, ironically, man, I mean, I, I will say this. I will say this. Um, in order to be a Nick Saban ball club, you have to play perfectly. Like, you have to get the ball to bounce your way. Um, You have to play flawless. And honestly, when when a receiver has three touchdowns, 216 yards, and 12 receptions in the first half, um... Oh, now, excuse me, let, let, let me rephrase that. Not just the receiver, the, the Heisman Trophy winner. <laughs> Let's call it what it is. Um, so, 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 something's gone terribly awry in, in your scheme and your planning. With that being said, um, it's, it's, I, 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 I wish I had anything other than, you know, to say, man, that, 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 that was beautiful to watch. Um, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, shout out to Nick Saban, who arguably may go down. We, we can have discussion at another time as the greatest coach um, in, in modern day sports uh, for what he was able to do, um, or what he's been able to do before that for that for that program. Um, I saw I saw a report the other day that uh, said anybody who Nick Saban has recruited has at least has at least one championship. Uh, to his name, um, if he stayed at Alabama. So um, this, this this man, I, I don't know how he does it, but he does it. So salute to him. Um, Ohio State, nothing to hang your hat about. You know, you really ran up against an, a, a superior opponent. Um, you were playing with a short deck. Your quarterback wasn't 100%. You had uh, significant injuries both. Or on your offensive, defensive line, and your and your linebacker corner, and your secondary, and you were trying to stop uh, a Heisman Trophy winner, a Heisman Trophy runner-up, arguably one of the greatest running backs um, in, in program history, um, and, and 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 an offensive play caller and Sarkeesian who literally uh, was drawing stuff up and, and it was working. So, um, again, it is what it is, but I, I enjoyed it, man. Okay, and um. You know, it, it, it's bad because of the way that that junk went down. And um, like I said, at halftime it was over. And um, one of the <laughs> – I know they're going to get mad, but I'm going to do it anyway. And, and looking at a lot of the mock drafts, the guy that was going off is projected to come to Motown. So I love it. Devontae Smith was going absolutely crazy. They ran a bubble screen for him where he ran behind uh, Mac Jones, and, and he went back outside. Now, the way that he caught the pass and the way that the defense fronted him, 
there was no way that he was supposed to get to the corner, right? He's <laughs> like, they had a trap. Well, mm. he got to the corner and ended up picking up 20 more yards. I'm like, yo, if this dude don't got that speed that'll kill somebody, like, my goodness, he got speed. Like, they had to do something to his hand to get him out of the game. Like, I was up here at halftime. When I seen the stats, he had 12 catches, 215 yards, and three touchdowns. I'm like, he could finish this game with three or four dollars. Like, like, or, or, or period, 300 or, or 400 yards. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought that this was going to get out of hand, and he ended up getting hurt early in the the, uh, the second half to get him out of there and kind of make it look like an even kill game, even though they still ended up losing by, I think, 28. But still, yet yeah, amazing work by Alabama. And um, I, I'm going to say this, too, also. I know a lot of people are big into I, – I, I can't get away from one of them. So, Trevor Lawrence, you're you already going to get by. i give you that. They're big into uh, Trey Lance, They're, and I'm a big fan of Zach Wilson. I, I love the way that this guy throws the ball. Um, I'm trying to think of all of the quarterbacks out there, you know. But um, Mac Jones' name should be in there. Oh, Kyle Trask is the other guy that I'm thinking about because they were yeah, so high right. on him until yeah. he started getting beat up. He started getting beat up at the end of the season. Mac Jones' name needs to be in the discussion. Period. Not not like oh. Honorable mention, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. He makes all the throws. He can scramble, and he's tough. He got guts. So, like, shoot, let, let, let's let have a play around. <laughs> like, let, let's have a play around. Bring him to Michigan. We, we did, that's fine. Do, trade, do some trades, get a back-to-backer, get get them two to work together, something. But he's, he's definitely a quarterback that I'd like to see play in the league. I, I, just, I just don't want him to fall to a team where he's going to have to wait about a season or two to get on the field, but it potentially that's what's going to end up happening anyway. But, Barry, your thoughts on the game between Ohio State and uh, Alabama? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was going to mention that. Um, who? Mac Jones put some respect on that boy's name. I mean, he was a, a Heisman, you know, candidate for a reason. That kid can play. And, you know, um, I heard, you know, Stephen A. say, I heard, I heard somebody, somebody else say it too, like the Steelers should be looking at him uh, very closely in this draft um, if they're not going to move up for a quarterback. I think he'll be sitting there in the first round. That's not a bad pick to, to go with. But no, no, Alabama, no, 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 Why? no, no, Why? no, no, Why? no, Najee Harris. I want Najee listen, Harris. I, we said it. We said it. Oh, he's not lying. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, Barry, Barry, he's not lying. Barry, he's not lying. They need a running back. Not now. But like no, my no, family no. down south would say, right now. Right now. Right now. Right no, now. Right right now. now. I, I, think, now. I, think, I think the Steelers <laughs> right need a lot now. of pieces. <laughs> the Steelers need a lot of pieces. Their offensive line is getting old with Pouncey and company. They don't have a running yeah. back. I mean, this is three years that they haven't had a they running back. They need a running back. This is ridiculous this is for the Steelers. Dog. Dog, yeah. listen, listen. I get what you're saying, the pieces that they do need, and they do need to address that within this season and the seasons to come within the draft because they're sure. not going to be able to yeah. be cool that team immediately. But right now, mm-hmm. and Lord forgive me if I'm saying the wrong thing because I know how karma works. When they went and picked up James Conner, I'm like, yo, he's going to be like a back that they could put in at certain times of the game. He was fighting cancer coming into the league. Sure. I didn't want to see him be a feature back. They forced him to be a feature back. And he was already off of the field on so many different occasions. It's like they did not try to address that after I, – I, I don't want to call him pig-headed, but they battled Le- Le'Veon Bell and LeGarrette Blunt and watched yeah. them leave and never really uh-huh. fulfilled that void in the backfield and leaving Ben to pull that pistol out by himself. And don't get me wrong, like Ben had those turnovers, but, you know, one of the snaps went over his head and, and a lot of those balls were tipped right back into Cleveland's hand. So, like – if he had a running back, a lot of the situations would have changed. And even Mike Tomlin was saying it. We don't deserve to win a game if we can't get a yard. James Conner was the running back that he's talking about. That's the running back that he's no, talking about. So, like, if they could, if, if they could get if, – now, I know Najee won't be there because they, they – shoot. If not, I, man, I'm in his back because Detroit don't really need a running back. But I want him. Like, true. But it, it's like <laughs> they need to address that need to get a running back, especially a guy as powerful as he is coming out of college too. So, I, I get it, but I, I get both of y'all. Like, like, let me not just say it's like in one or the other. Like, because Mac Jones would definitely qualify to me better than Mason Rudolph or uh, Duck, whatever his name is. You know, like, like, uh, man, yeah. whatever. But my, from my perspective, TP, and, and I don't, we can talk Steelers a little bit, but like from my perspective, they need a lot of help. 
Um, I don't want to see Najee Harris turn into Saquon Barkley. And I say that because they drafted Barkley without addressing the offensive line first. And Barkley had a good year the first year and then had, you know, hasn't been able to get off in the last two years. He got hurt this year, obviously, but because the offensive line wasn't ready for him. So, I, you know, why you're going to get Harris, I, that's not a bad pick. I wouldn't be hating on that, but they don't have the offensive line to block for him. So, uh, and I think Ben is finished. I think um, Ben should retire. I think he, he's a stationary target back there, and he can't throw it downfield. So, um, listen, if if they had got Harris in the first round and then Mack is sitting there in the second round and they don't pick him, then I'm going to be questioning what that's going on there. But there's a lot of other pieces they need to fix. But, you know, we can talk about that, you know, another time. But Alabama. I mean, Pittsburgh should be dropping every player on the Alabama offense at quarterback, receiver, running back, offensive line, everything, because that team is amazing. Uh, we said that that offense is one – I said at least is one of the best offenses in college I've seen in a while. Um, Ohio State, not that they couldn't put up a fight, but they couldn't hang with Alabama. Um, Fields, was, like Sirius said, um, alluded to, I, I actually forgot. He was a little banged up from the last game. Um so, you know, we didn't see his best self. I don't think this is that game was a reflection of what kind of play he can be at the next level. I still think he's a good player. Um, but Ohio State, even though they had the weapons, they were completely lost on defense. They couldn't guard. I mean, how are you going to let Smith run downfield by himself and, you know, bomb co- oh, double cover goodness. guys underneath? Like, it, the coverage, you know, I, <laughs> I call that coaching, but a lot of that was assignment football, and they weren't playing assignment football. I mean, Alabama Goodness. just ran, you know, they ran they ran crossing patterns and, and, and put them in position where safety had to pick one or the other, and they made the wrong choice. Um, so it, it, that was the whole game. But, I mean, Alabama, they out-schemed them. Saban came out there and left no doubt that his seventh championship wasn't going to be a close game. Like, pretty much every championship game has been a close game. He left no doubt this time. Um, and, and the only other takeaway I got from this game um, – which at times is hard to watch because Alabama just thoroughly dominated. Well, I mean, Smith had a career game in the first half before he got hurt. Uh, but Waddle, I, I love the heart. I love you trying to get out there. But, A, they didn't need you. And, B, you can't, you can't be out there risking your future like that. I mean, if you were, if they absolutely needed him, I could see him gutting it out. But he just looked bad running down the field, and they just didn't need him trying to, to hobble himself down the field. Like he played with the screws in his ankle. I give him props for it. It's hard to say because, CP, we were in that position when we played, not at that level, but, you know, we tried to come back. You made it back in the field late in the season. I couldn't make it back. Um, I begged to, to play, and they wouldn't let me play. Um, and the, in the long run, it probably would have, was for the best. But – I, so I understand why he wanted to be out there with his teammates and give it all he had. But I mean, don't think about your future. I, you know, I hope you know you you hope nothing would have happened in the game that he couldn't play at the next level. And and he's a legit player. I mean, anybody that's going to get him in the draft is getting a heck of a football player. Um, so that was the only other takeaway I had from the game. He still projected his. Top ten, they think that he may go before yeah. Devontae. That's the crazy part about it. And um, Barry, like like you said about what we went through, you, like if a championship is on the line and and you guys are here at the pinnacle, you want to play. So I get what Waddle was trying to do and, and try to do whatever he can. And that first catch that he caught and Matt like was about to scramble and he seen Waddle streaking across the screen. He's like, whoop! He gave him the ball and he took off. And as soon as he got to the sideline, <laughs> he just started waving like it, it just reaggravated. I'm like, man, like. And I was like, I could just imagine if Waddle was out there on the field while Devontae was going crazy. And I don't know if I put this in front of Coach Day or the defensive coordinator, but I don't understand how you guys kept losing. Devontae Smith and this dude just won the ice. Man, wait, wait, hold on. I don't know if you hear me. I don't know how you keep losing <laughs> Devontae Smith and this dude just won the Heisman. The, I think it was the last touchdown that he caught. He did a crossing route. And he's one on one with the linebacker. Are you kidding me? As soon as he caught the ball, it, it looked like how um, Odell would like do Dallas. Like Odell would catch the yeah. ball, and you just see Brandon Carr just looking slower and slower. And there was a linebacker running behind him, and it was like the running back. I mean, the linebacker looked like he was running his hardest, and it wasn't doing no good for him to even chase him. He just should have stopped because it looked that bad. And 
It's like you, you guys didn't have no scheme, no way to worry about him. You just wanted to pick up this trophy in New York City or wherever you had to go get the doggone trophy, and y'all had no answer for him defensively. Like, let alone his damage was done in the first half, and he still walked away with that doggone trophy. He did enough to y'all to get it in the first half. And the crazy part about it is, and this is where I think me and Barry had, you know, we went back and forth on terrorizing this whole situation. This is what you guys get for forcing Ohio State into this playoff, and they didn't play enough games, and they looked bad. Like, even though they beat Clemson, and I give them their credit for knocking off Clemson, they went into that game up against Alabama, and Alabama went through the wire with everybody. So you can just imagine that I think the last time that they played, that was Ezekiel Elliott game where he went crazy, and um, they lost him. So you know Saban was like, oh, this ain't happening again. We're going to beat the blood out of you guys at the end of the day, and that and that's exactly what happened. So – Shout out, shout out to Alabama for notching that uh, championship. And even though I can't stand them because, uh, you know, I'm still bitter about how things happened in the early 90s when Gino Toretta got his Heisman Trophy and we lost to Alabama so bad in that, that uh, Sugar Bowl. I'm still bitter. I still want to play them and run it back, man. Every time Miami do good, I'm like, yo, just make sure Alabama there when we get there. I want to play. That's all I look for with Miami hot. I'm like, y'all want Alabama back, period. Like I told Barry the other day, and the words of Sticky Fingers in the movie next Friday, pick the rematch. <laughs> like, for real, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. <laughs> okay. All right. So, like I said, more more stuff to get to, a lot, lot, of, lot of stuff to get into. Um, first and foremost, another thing I want to get into, and I know they already hinted to a lot of the playoffs, and I want to get to one situation in the playoffs that happened, and I, I do need to get some of the picks for um, at least the Saturday's game, so then we'll start to pick on Sunday too. But there, and and this is where Barry like infects me. Like like I feel like he's Agent Smith, and he just put his his fingers in my chest, and I'm turning all black, and I'm putting the shades. Are on you don't mean me for he that. Got, Come on now, he, 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 he got he got through to, he got he got through to me on this one. So so I am going to play the bad guy in this one, but I want people to understand how far this situation went back and I had to really, really think about it while it happened this Sunday, right? So as you know, I just spoke about Miami. I'm a hard hurricane fan. So I watch a lot of the players and what they do. And um I think it was like two thousand and three, two thousand two, one of those games in the AFC in the playoffs. And it was on NBC and it was the Titans versus the Ravens. And they show the camera, the cameraman's walking into the locker room and Brian Bill getting ready to talk to him. And he said, man, turn the cameras off, man, turn the lights off. But the cameraman turned the screen off, but he still had the sound on. And then Billy goes, man, F the Titans, man. And they just start going crazy, right? Like the whole Ravens went crazy. <laughs> as soon as they started to speak off, he went like that. So I'm like, when it started going down, I started thinking back like, man, this rivalry has been, this is forever. Like this is, this Eddie George Ray, like this, these boys used to bang out. Like, I don't know what's going on. So, like, then thinking back into the game this year when the Titans disrespected the Ravens, like, it all started coming back to me. So, I'm like, not not as far as back as Ray and them. It came to me this Sunday. But watching how it happened earlier this season when the Titans disrespected the Ravens and Harbaugh got pissed and tried to come after them, and, and you seen Vrabel like, man, just go to the sideline, man, calm down. And Malcolm Butler was talking junk. So, then – in the midst of this game, and, and this is where it's funny, and I wish James was here because I would terrorize him right now because he likes to talk junk to me like this too. And just watching Tannehill make that overthrow, and then Peters gets the pick. He picks it and runs toward Baltimore sideline. Now, you got to see if, if you rewatch it, watch YouTube. He gets the pick. He gets to the sideline. He's telling them, yo, come on, come on. So then he finally slides. He didn't get tackled. He slid right at the 50, so he could get all of them. So they all run out there. They got to that T in the Tennessee Titans Arena Stadium and just started <laughs> stomping. He, he did the battle cap fan on their joint so they could all start going crazy. I'm telling you, like I told you, Barry's infectious. I loved every last bit of that. Like, I didn't care <laughs> about the 15-yard penalty. It, it's, a, it's a word called karma. And in the words of South P and Jada Kiss, you get what you ask for. <laughs> it happened in the playoffs. I'm like, what? Like, at the worst time, that could happen. But shout out to Lamar Jackson for overcoming the odds, even though he didn't have the greatest day passing. But mm-hmm. I'm, a, I'm okay. 
People may laugh at me. My favorite quarterback of all time to me, to me was Randall. I love Randall because Randall was – if Randall didn't see it, Randall out of here. Bye. See you. Like, so, man, <laughs> that, that 50-yard touchdown he had, he pulled it down and started taking off. Now, one, it was the linebacker and Bayard chasing him. And when he got the Bayard, it was like he turned on two more gears. He started leaving Bayard. I'm like, wait, wait, wait what? This dude is not playing. Like, like he was not playing around. I'll I tell you, I, and, uh, my, you know, the Lions play – the AFC North next year, I definitely want to go see the Steelers game with series, but I do want to see – but I just want to see Lamar live. Like, I, I got to see that <laughs> live. Like, I, I, man, that is ridiculous for a quarterback to have that kind of speed to get away from secondary players. Like, like I said, that game – like, I'm getting goosebumps talking about how crazy that game was. But that pick that Peters got and they celebrated I, – listen – I'm looking at hardball. I wouldn't even care, Marcus. I would tap you on your helmet, and be like, "Come here." I might hug him, like, "Man, go over there and get all the Gatorade you need." Because like, the way that they disrespected him in Baltimore, that's what I call karma, and not like they did anything like brutal, like hitting somebody late or something. But that is exactly what Tennessee deserved for being disrespectful. Uh, I'll throw this one around the grill and see how y'all feel about it, because I, I couldn't wait to talk about this one today. Um, uh, Barry, I'll come to you first. Your thoughts on the Ravens-Titans game to set this one off? I mean, you know, early I thought, you know, it was going to be, you know, Titans were going to get back in that bully mode. And then, you know, the Ravens came back and, and you know what, he had um, – they had a, he had a great game, Lamar Jackson. He did what he had to do, running the football, um, making the throws that he had to make, you know, not all of them, but, you know, the ones he needed to. And that defense was pretty darn good to shut down, um, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. th- that Whoa. beast, that beast. I mean, mm-hmm. only to get – to get for him to only have, like, what, 50-something yards in that game? Um, it was know, like it, 40. It, I think it was 40. I think I think they held him to 40. Yeah, they might have had 50-something as a team and it held um, – and held them to to um to to forty, but you know, um, it was it was a, that was a heck of a show that that defense really stepped up and had a great game. And I agree with you. Listen, um, it's a rivalry. Um, you know, they came down there last year and, and, and you know put put a hurting on them in their in their home building when they were probably favored to get you know all the way to um to to the Super Bowl. So. I understand. Listen, and and you know you're right. Early in the season, it was uh, it was it was it was a brutal brutal game, and you know they they disrespect them. So you know, turn around, fair play, and 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 I I like that Jackson led the charge. Said, you know, come on, let's go, come on to the field. Like we're not shaking their hands. Let's go, we out. Like I, I get it. You know. Go ahead. No, I was saying, and then that part, when he, as soon as the game was over, when he got that last meal, he ran straight off the field. I'm like, and then that, you know, like. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, I, I listen, I get it. You know, listen, that's, that's, I, listen, I don't always agree with running off the court. Listen, I gave LeBron and, and some other guys, you know, a lot of crap for running off the court in, in before the game was over. And Isaiah Thomas, infamously, basketball's a little bit different than football. But, I mean, you know, at that moment, I get it. I get it. You know what? It's like when, you know, Dallas, back in the day, Dallas and, and San Francisco were beefing and, you know, T.O. going on the star and all that kind of stuff. Like, I get it. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. Just do your thing. So, um, but it was a good game. It was a really physical game. Um, the, the, I'm happy Lamar Jackson got that monkey off his back. Um, you know, and now he's got a tough game in Buffalo in the snow against a good Buffalo team that, you know what, they didn't look, they looked good. They didn't look great. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, they looked good, but, you know, they had to hold on to, to get that win. Um, the defense in Buffalo's kind of step up a little bit more. I thought the Colts put on a heck of a show. Colts defense is very underrated. Um, put on a great show. But, um, you know, it's going to be a good game with Baltimore and and and, and Buffalo, and, and you know, we'll see we'll see who comes out on top. Okay, Sirius, your thoughts on this game? Even though I know you don't want to comment on your rival of the Ravens, yeah, but yeah. at least if if you want to, I mean, at least I, I don't I don't know if it's in you, but at least to me, I really feel like a bad guy in like pushing or condoning 
the way Peters got that interception and called the whole team out. It was like 20 of them got on that tee and started stomping. You see, mm-hmm. like, three of them really jumping with two feet on the tee. Like, they was letting them know. I love every bit of that. Like, oh, I got <laughs> man, yeah. your, your thoughts on the game, man. You know, honestly, man, I, I'm with you, man. I, I loved every second of that, you know. And and this kind of goes back for for me. <laughs> you know, I grew up, I I grew up playing, you know, middle school, high school. Um, I played semi pro football. Um, and when I was playing high school basketball, um, we used to get dogged by uh, this school named Potomac. Um, and one of the things that they used to do is when they beat us at home, they will do their post-game celebration on my logo at, at center court. So my <laughs> – um, yeah, so, you know, I ended, I, I ended up playing uh, varsity ball on my sophomore year, and we're down by, we're, we're down by two. Um, coach calls a play. I end up hitting the, the jumper. I'd fallen out of bounds, and we end up beating Potomac. Now, keep, keep, keep in mind, this is like week like four or five of the regular season. This, this ain't no championship. This ain't no playoff. This, this ain't nothing. And we go to midcourt on their building and start dancing. Oh, it, yo, and, and it snapped me straight back to that. You know what I'm saying? I understand that there's, there's, there's something in sports called, you know, losing – uh, I mean, win them gracefully or whatever. But if, if you want to take it to that type of level, then you know, eventually, when 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 you get your get back, you should you, you deserve the right to to get to get your get back. Uh, so I mean, as, as much as I hated that was it was the Ravens. Um, you know what, Peters, do your thing, talk your stuff. You played a heck of a game. Um, on. on yeah, you played you played a heck of a game, man, and I, and I applaud you for that. So it was it was good. I actually, I actually enjoyed it. Like I said, it's a song called "The Flick of the Wrist." Like like he did that when he got the ball and put it on the fifty. Yo, he flicked his wrist so perfect with the ball, spun it on him. It was like yo, if I was on the Titans. It's a fight. <laughs> like, we fight and forget it. I done got kicked out. Coach would have been like, y'all know what you think you're doing. We got a 15 yard And listen, they ain't going to do that to us. But it's like, if I was on the Ravens, man, please, I would have took my helmet off. We done, everybody got a penalty. Like, what? It would have went. <laughs> down. Stop, stop, man, all type of stuff. I'm telling you, they, the way that the, the Titans did it to them in Baltimore, and let alone it was Malcolm Butler. Like, you know, everybody know you from the Super Bowl MVP that you got off of pick and rust. So, you know, everybody know you, and you was talking to Harbaugh. You wasn't talking to Lamar. You wasn't talking to Justin Tucker. You went to Harbaugh and went off. Like, what? Everybody, I'd have been like this in the locker room. We walking out. Yo, listen, we win. Yo, spit on the tee. Like, spill everything. You be lucky we can't be graphic because I'll go crazy. But, like, man, it is no way on oh, God's green earth. I would have pulled the Randy Moss. I I would have pulled the Randy right. Moss joint, you know what I'm saying, from Minnesota. Yeah, I, 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 I would have all of that. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. and you know I'm a more fan, so I, I love. I still love the part when Joe Buck said that is disgusting. I like, like, man, it's like, boy, please, you never play sports in your life if you can't appreciate that. Like, man, hold up, don't even get me started with him. Okay, so the next one that I want to get into about these games that went down on uh, Sunday, and, and believe me, like, uh, it, it was like pandemonium for me just watching these games go down. But like that was the first one that 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 comes to mind is um the way that things went down in the uh, you know in that game that happened in Nashville. But um a lot of the, a lot a lot of how these games are set up is very interesting in itself. Um you get to see now uh, Drew Brees and Brady go at it, and it's like there's a picture, and I feel bad in saying this, right? But there's a picture. Of uh, <laughs> how the matchup looks, right? So they go Tampa Bay versus New Orleans, and you got to see the picture. It's a picture of Brady, and he really looks like he's seventy years old. And Breeze really wow. looks like he's seventy years old. And Brady has a full beard; it's all gray. And you know, you already see like Breeze is already receding because he's older now. And his is like he's completely bald, and like the hair that he has is completely gray. And it it, it just it just fitting to see this go down. But I can't lie. You know, a lot of my heart is involved into this because it's like we're, this is this is greatness, or or at least legends that we get to see to close out. You know their careers. Whoever loses, well, I, I, I think more or less if if uh, how do I say it? 
if Brady loses, Brady's going to come back. But if Breeze loses, I don't know if Breeze will come back because we're starting to see the decline. But, um, you know, especially the way that that game went, I'm not going to lie, and I know, Moe, if you listen, I hate to beat you up like this, but Chicago was doing absolutely nothing offensively so bad to the point where I napped. <laughs> like, like I, I fell asleep and woke up in the game was in the fourth quarter. I'm like, man, yo, this, this is how it is, man. I, I, like, felt so bad watching Chicago just have no effort. And people like, well, yeah, this is the start of getting rid of Trubisky. I'm thinking Trubisky could probably do something on that field, and he could. But I want to see how you guys at least felt about that game with uh, the Bears going into New Orleans and New Orleans living to see another day. But uh, with them with this upcoming matchup, up against Tampa Bay. Serious, I'll come to you first. You know, gentlemen, this is it's very difficult to, to beat a team three times in a regular season. Um, and this is what you're asking the 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 New Orleans Saints to do. Um I, I honestly gentlemen, it it's it's gonna be very difficult because let, let's keep it a buck. Drew Brees looks every bit of his age right now, like every bit, like mm-hmm. well, I'm, 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 I'm sure we're gonna talk about Big Ben and, and, and the Steelers and this, that, and the third, you know, later on in the show. If not this show, definitely Sunday. But um, Drew Brees looks every bit of that old. Like he has no zip on his ball like he used to. Um, it's, it's it's just a bad look in my opinion. Um, and so yeah, what, what I'm tipping my hand. Um, I, I, I'm thinking I Tampa Bay gets this one, to, you know, this weekend, man. I, I think Tom Brady is going to make it his personal mission to um to get to spread the ball around to an assortment of weapons. Um, I I I, I don't think you're going to beat Tom Brady three times in in, in, a, in a row. Uh, I just don't see I don't see that happening. So. Um, with that being said, you know, no skin off or Drew Brees' nose. He, 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 he's had one crazy career, um, definitely Hall of Fame worthy. Um, it's going to think that that, you know, second championship is going to probably elude him. Um, but, yeah, I, I, it's, it sucks. But, yeah, Brady's going to get it done this week. I know why he's going with Tampa Bay people. Antonio Brown people. I repeat, A.B. It's an A.B. sighting, and A.B. is alive. Like, A.B. is not playing around. This dude looked like himself. He looked like himself, man. So, um, and, and this is another thing about this. If And this is what I was hoping. Is, well, not saying hoping, but I wanted to see throughout the season. I wanted to see Leonard Fournette get started, and he looked like his swagger is there. So, they saved him as much as possible. And don't forget Shady there, too. So it's interesting to see what this Calvary looked like with Tampa Bay. But this is the interesting point. If the Saints lose this game on that field, out of the last four seasons they lost on that turf in that dome, three out of the last four in which the fourth one was the Hail Mary that Lattimore and them let Stephon Diggs get off and score that touchdown for the 71-yard uh Hail Mary pass by Case Keenum where we don't even see Case Keenum no more. So it, it'd be puzzling to see Drew Brees lose like that on his own merit. Um, but, Barry, your thoughts on this matchup and your thoughts on the, the Bears-Saints game, if you if you want to elaborate on that as well. I mean, the Bears-Saints game, um, the Bears stink. <laughs> what are they doing in the playoffs? They stink. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, no, you know, it is, it is, it's crazy because, they are not, they're not a very good team. You know, they got Khalil Mack. They got, a, you know, okay defense, and they got some weapons on offense. Boy, they could use Deshaun Watson in the offseason. But um, they have no running back. Hey, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. <laughs> but, no, it's just, it's just, um, as bad as the Bears looked in that game, the, the, the Saints held them up for, like, three quarters until they finally started to pull away. That's one reason why, and, and that, and, and Drew Brees looks long in the tooth. That I think the Bucks are going to take this game from the, the the Saints. Everything is pointing in the direction of the Bucks because, like you said, it's hard to beat a team three times in one year. Um, I think the Giants did it um, against the uh, in, in '86 when I was like five years old. Uh, beat the Redskins three times. That third time is tough, man. It's hard to fool a team three times in one year. Um, 
you know, and they, you know, like the the Cowboys and Giants. I think back in um, in the Super Bowl year in '07, you know, the Cowboys beat them twice, and the Giants went into Dallas and beat Dallas on their way to the Super Bowl. You know, it's hard to beat a team a third time when you face them twice already in that year. So, I, you know, I'm not surprised. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be surprised if if the Bucks take this game. Um, the Saints just didn't. Don't they just don't skip? I mean, they got weapons. Don't get me wrong, but they just you know it's something about them that just don't look like their world be. I, I could be wrong, and if they win the game, would I be surprised? Not really. But I just everything's pointing towards the Bucks for me. Um, it's gonna be a. It, it should be a good game in the dome. I mean, that's that's good conditions for for uh, Brady, but. Um, you know, it, listen, if they get if Cam Jordan has the game of his life, they get after him, it could be a long day for the for the Bucks. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Brady's not dropping back too long, getting the ball out of his hand quick. Um and, and you know, they, they they might make mince meat out of him. Who knows? So um but yeah, the Saints Bears game, super snore. Um Bears got a lot of work to do in the off season, but you know, I Saints and Bucks should be a fun one. I saw that picture. The history awaits. The history just. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's what you got. Two old quarterbacks. What? If if this is Drew Brees' last stand, this might be his best chance to get the Super Bowl. I hope you know for him personally, he gets a chance too. But if he doesn't, it's... and uh, I'm going to say it like this: I'm I'm not a Saints fan. I used to follow him a lot back in the day when they had Ironhead Hayward and Toy Cook and Quinn Early, Pat Swillen and Sam Mills, all of them. But it's something about a Saints game, and they don't watch him anymore. They don't put the camera in front of him. But when Drew Brees gets them hyped, they say, we're going to win, and the whole team go again. And he say, win again, and they go crazy. Yo, I, I'm getting chills right now. <laughs> like, like, it's like, yo, I could play with Brees if he was to get us pumped like that. Like, I would go out of my skin. But it's like to see that end, like I don't, and let alone on his own field, and he going up against, the GOAT, like, against Brady, it's like, this is the bang out that we, we want to see go down, man. And I, I want Breeze to get it, man. Like, at least get to the, to the NFC Championship. and But however it goes down, I really think it's going to be Green Bay versus one of them, too. So it's either Tom, it's going to be 12 versus 12, it's going to be Tom or Aaron, or it's going to be Drew and Aaron. Like, because I, I just don't feel like somebody's going to slow Aaron down right now. Like, I feel like the Packers are going to win the NFC, but – just to see an old-fashioned shootout, and I want it to be a shootout. I don't want it to be no defensive game because these are the quarterbacks that we grew up seeing. I, I remember Breeze from Purdue, and I remember Breeze from San Diego, and now we're seeing Breeze right now at the latter point of his career, and he just turned 42 this month of January, and you got Brady that's going to turn uh, 44 in August. Like this is This is incredible that we're seeing this. This is incredible that these guys are record-holding quarterbacks still going at it, and Playing at an elite level, even though we're seeing the decline in them, and they are they are aging, but there only could be one winner. There can only be one winner, and um, yeah, I'm I'm pulling for the Saints, man. Brady Brady got it, man. Like I feel like this, I'm, and it, just like I said, I feel like the Packers are going to win the NFC. But if Brady beat Breeze, you already know Vegas is involved. I feel like Vegas going to have him slowly walk right into Green Bay knock off Aaron, and then be the first quarterback ever to have a home game for the Super Bowl because it's played in Tampa this year. So he'll have a home game for the doggone Super Bowl. How fitting would that be for Brady? So it's like somebody knock him off and don't let this this ball start rolling and be like, oh, Brady got this in there. I don't, I don't, I'm done. Like, like, yeah, I, I gave him the GO title when he won that fourth championship. He's already did everything. Like, he don't need no more. He's fine. He's fine. Okay. So I don't want to be too brutal. <laughs> but we are at this point in time in this show. <laughs> and um, I, 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 I'm not going to be – I'm, I'm going to try my best to not be this brutal, right? Because I don't want to put all of this on Benjamin because I love Ben as a quarterback, right? But this this situation we talked about earlier that's going on in Pittsburgh, and, and, and I know it's easy to try and point the finger at Tomlin, and I don't want to put this on Tomlin because I'm not a Steelers fan and – me and Sirius go at it, but I support the hell out of Mike Tomlin. I, I want to see him as a black coach do well, and he has not had a losing season ever. But something has to give. Somebody needs to finger point it. I don't know if it's all on 
Ben. I don't know if it's Juju and him calling out the Browns, and now everybody coming after Claypool. And Claypool was – I didn't even know Claypool was out there talking junk. But Claypool was out there talking junk, giving these guys bulletin board material. It's like it's more than Ben. It's more than you guys are saying, oh, Ben's older, get rid of him, he's done. Like this dude is first ballot Hall of Famer when his time is up. I don't I don't think Ben is done. For the start that he had to the season, yeah, they, they played teams that they should have beaten and they had the 11-0 and start. Great, I get it. Like, But I don't want to see Ben just leave the game with an opportunity to get them back into the game. He fought back and put plus 30 back on the board while they were down 28. Like he had fight to get these guys back into the game. And some of those picks that were thrown, it was off of these guys' hands. And then, you know, listen to other people out there professionally saying these receivers are kind of letting Ben down too, like not being able to get separation or dropping passes, and he can't really believe into the receiving core. And I don't want to put it all on one person, but it's easy to put it on Ben. But the one thing that burns me that I want to see Ben come back is the end of the game and Ben just sitting there. And just like like the reality of not only losing the game, but this could potentially be his last game because of all of the money that he could be due next year in Pittsburgh. Like it's like I don't want to see Ben leave like that. Like like not like that. Let alone it was a turnover heavy game for him. Like that ain't that ain't how it's supposed to be now. Rivers situation, at least Rivers threw the ball out of bounds twice and tried to throw a Hail Mary and then, and it was like, No, that I'm not buying that Philip. But Ben's situation he fought back like crazy to get them back in this game. And I'm like, yo, listen, if the Steelers come back and win this game, crown them. Like, like I feel like Dennis Green, you crown them, folks. Barry, I'll let you set this <laughs> one off. Your thoughts on the, the, the Cleveland Browns almost massacre until Ben tried to fight back and get them in, but this still was a double-digit loss. Yeah, I mean, listen, congratulations to the Browns. I mean, they haven't been in the playoffs in, in, in a long time. And uh, get a get a win when I think we all picked against them, and, and you know I I didn't think going on the road in Pittsburgh when when Pittsburgh was going to be at full strength and and that they would be able to get a win, but I mean we underestimated how poorly the Steelers have looked a couple months, and you know Sirius was was hitting on it too, so um, you know it's tough. It's tough to go you know into the playoffs when you're not playing your best football. Not a lot of teams can uh, win like that, and you know even uh, Coach uh, Tomlin said you know they, they they died on the vine for a while. You know so um, you know Pittsburgh. We we talked about it. They're, they got a lot of problems on offense. I think defensively they they they're, they're fine. I think they can probably use another rusher, but I mean for the most part they're pretty pretty um, balanced there. They might need another linebacker because uh, Bush had that devastating injury. I think that kind of hurt them a little bit. Um, but for the most part, defensively, they're fine. I think offensively, they need everything, uh, except for receivers maybe. But I think their receivers got humbled a little bit out there. Um, they could use offensive linemen, um, some young ones, uh, definitely running backs, like uh, Siri said. And I think I think they need to move on from Ben. I think, um, I think you know, that class of Eli – Rivers and, and Roethlisberger's their their time is over. Uh, I I think um, I think Rivers is probably ready to retire. I think you know he probably should. Um, and, and I think Ben doesn't just doesn't have it anymore. I think um, for the most part, you know he, he he's not as mobile as he used to be. He's he's big and tough, but you know if you're st- standing pocket standing uh, target in the pocket and you can't move around and then you can't really throw it down field like you used to. Uh, with that, when he with any real kind of accuracy, I think it's time to I think it's time to move on. And and um, you know he's got a forty million, forty one million dollar I think in his series, right? For forty one million dollar um, salary 41. hit. Um, it's forty one. Yeah. What is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's forty one. So, yeah. So I mean, it's huge. It's it's a big. It's it's huge. So you know, do you. <laughs> I mean, do you turn that down? No, I'll come play. Yeah, I'll come play. Oh, I'll one, 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 one. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can wheel me out there. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Everything. $41 million? I'm about to go check my lottery ticket right now for that Powerball. 41 I'll take that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard, it's hard to, to turn that, but I, don't, I think he's done. I, I really don't think he has much to play. I think they need to move on from him and find their quarterback in the future and, and, and retool and, and get some athletes in, in, in Pittsburgh. So it's kind of like, I wouldn't say it's fitting the way they went out, but I mean, you know, with the way the season kind of ended and, and they almost missed the playoffs with how bad they were playing at the end. 
it's kind of it's kind of better that it you know just rip the bandaid off and and, and um you know the, you know the better team on the field pretty much won that game. Okay, before I see you, sir, we do have a caller in queue. Caller from the five seven zero area code. Uh, welcome to the cookout. What's your name and what's on your mind this evening? What's going on, boys? I just came here to talk some playoff football. Who's ready for a big week of playoff football? Okay, and your name? Nick. Okay, Nick, and your your thoughts on the game? How, how do you feel about Big Ben? Do you think he should stay or go? How do you feel about the organization movement and uh, also on the Cleveland Browns' success in Heinz Field? Well, I mean, the Browns, well, I think Ben's getting old. I mean, he didn't look all that good in that game. I mean, it was a bad start from the get-go with the high snap. He didn't look good. I think he should probably hang up the cleats at this point. I mean, it's been the last couple of years. He just he's been okay, but he hasn't been like great or good enough to win a Super Bowl. And at the end of the game, I mean, he was just sitting on the bench. You you saw like him crying. So I think that might be like a sign like he's near the end. Yeah, I think they should move on from him. And and, and the, the crazy part about that snap. It's like, okay, I can see if they had, like, an issue with the center and the, the quarterback. That's a pouncy, brother. These dudes are pro bowlers. Like, it's like both of them. Like, like, how in the heck did that ball get over his head that far? Ben is six foot six. Like, how how are you missing him? Like, and then that happened. It was like the floodgates, man. But, like, like you said, I didn't like to see that image of him on the sideline and Juju sitting there. And also another thing about the receiving core is Juju – is a free agent. So it, it's up to Juju if he wants to come yeah. back too. So a, this is interesting, man. Um, Nick, I don't know if you want to say there, but I'm going to get to the resident Steeler guy in his, and then uh, see how he feels about it. So Aaron, your, your thoughts on this and how it went down and I, I left you alone, but I, I should have, man. I, I, I really wanted to put that Michael Jackson with the popcorn up and, you know, say I'm just here for the comments, <laughs> you know, but you know. Uh, you know, honestly, gentlemen, um, I, I, as, as you are very much aware, I have a lot to say about what transpired in the stadium on um, on Sunday for a couple of things. I'm going to go ahead and debunk two statements that were just made. For starters, it's been reported that uh, Big Ben is due $41 million in 2021, actually due to – uh, bonus money that's already been paid. He's only going to be due nineteen million. Um, so the, the the bigger question that we have to answer is: Big Ben worth nineteen million dollars for one more run? If you listen to Mike Thomas' press conference today, um, he really didn't tip his hand, but he pretty much said that he is expecting Ben to to to, to want to come back and play. Which bows another go. question. Which yeah. which which which, which, which bows another which bows another question. Um, if Ben is going to want to come back and play, is Pittsburgh going to want to keep him? Keep in mind, gentlemen, we've been linked to potentially a Deshaun Watson sighting or Deshaun Watson move. Uh, we've also talked about the idea of getting younger at the position. Um, and just that in the third. So there's a bunch of questions that we have to answer. Um, I will say this. You know, I am sick and tired of getting to these one-and-done situations in the playoffs. I don't really care less, you know, about a, a, a winning regular season. Championships are not won in the regular season. They are won in the postseason. Um, and this is the third time that we've been in the postseason where we've had an early exit, and it's looked ideally just like this. I'll take you back to Jacksonville. when We played Jacksonville, and we got down like this, and, you know, we had to rally back to make it somewhat respectable. But if you actually look at the telltale of that game, we were really never in that game. We spotted the Cleveland Browns 28 points and had to fight back, and even though Big Ben finished with – Four touchdowns. He had the four interceptions, the 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 the, the box snap, and you know five hundred some odd yards. But again, that pales in comparison to the carnage that you know we had to endure along the way. Um, do I think about you know? Let me talk about Juju for a second. There is no doubt in my mind that I think Juju will be back. Um, he debunked a report today. Uh, from a well-known radio host, I'm not going to call his name on on this network, 
Um, but pretty much he said that, you know, Juju wanted big money and a big name free agent um, and, and, and a big city, and Juju tweeted him back and was like, nah, that, that, that's, that's not accurate. That's not what I want. Um, Juju has made it very, very clear that he wants to stay in Pittsburgh. So, Lord willing, he'll be in Pittsburgh. Honestly, as a Steelers fan, I, I, I want him back. Um, so, I, I'll go ahead and text you guys the, uh, the, 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 the response now. But at the end of the day, man, I'm, I'm furious. I'm very, very furious. Um, we have, in my opinion, a championship caliber ball club, and we have once again failed to make any type of significant one in the postseason. People are going to look at our offensive line, um, our running game, and, and all of these are, are massive issues that we have, um, which is why when, when Barry was talking about, you know, Alabama, you know, players, I, I, I don't care about Matt Jones. Go get me Najee Harris. You know what I'm saying? Go get me Travis mm. Etienne from 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 from, from mm-hmm. Clemson. Uh, <clears throat> get me somebody who can strike fear into a, an opponent. And no disrespect to James Conner, he is a great story. But great stories don't put you know touchdowns on the board. Great stories don't turn chicken salad out of chicken crap. You know what I'm saying? And unfortunately, that's the type of that, that's the type of situation that we that we find ourselves in. Um, I love our receiving core. I think we we led the league in drops this year. So as much as we want to crucify Big Ben for his his late season woes, our, our eligibles didn't hand him many favors. You know what I'm saying? Deontay Johnson got benched the first half of the Buffalo Bill game because he dropped too many passes in games before and was worn and he was benched. Eric Ebron, I don't even have to get to Eric Ebron. Thomas is sitting there. He understands it. He knows that he lived it. You know what I'm saying? Juju had drops and this, that, and the third. Claypool, rookie, he had drops. So I'm not making excuses for bad behavior, but I'm just trying to give you guys some context. You know, I do honestly believe that when we go, when we start talking football um, again in, in, in August and, you know, you know, July, and we'll probably have a draft show in April, this, that, and the third, that, you know, we'll be in the picture yet again. We do play the NFC. Uh, we play the NFC North, I believe. So we got Thomas Boys and and then the Vikings and the Bears and yeah, we get Green Bay. So it's gonna be it's, it's, it's gonna be a great year of trash talking for me because I get all these clowns. But at the end of the day, man, I, I think we are building something. And let's see if we can do this one more again. Ben, you know, Big Ben can come back, and you know, people are, are, are on this narrative that he doesn't have it anymore. This man was tied for ninth in the league with almost 4,000 yards and seventh with touchdown passes. You know what I'm saying? For, for, for somebody coming off elbow surgery, putting up those type of numbers, I, I, I don't believe that the narrative that he doesn't have anymore is accurate. Is he, is, is he not as mobile? I will give you that. Does he make dumb decisions and bonehead decisions at critical times? Unfortunately, he led the league in tip balls at the line of scrimmage. So maybe he can go back to his pump fake and stuff. But I'll give you that. But to sit there and say that he doesn't have any anymore is inaccurate. When, when, when Eli Manning was on his last hurrah, the brother can get the ball down the field. When, when, when Phillip Rivers is doing this thing in Indianapolis, again, he can barely get the ball down the field. You know what I'm saying? We're looking at Father Tom tap Drew Brees on the shoulder and say, bruh, you know, whether you win it this year or not, this is going to be your last year, that's unfortunate. But Father Tom hasn't tapped Big Ben on the shoulder. As a matter of fact, I believe he got an extra couple couple years uh, with the soldier, with, with the elbow surgery that he did last year. So we'll see what happens with it. But, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. You know, we got some big name free agents to sign, and I can talk about a whole show about that. But we'll keep it moving for now. He doesn't have it anymore, right? 47 completions in a game, that's a, that's an NFL record. 68 passes thrown with a torn elbow repaired, that's an NFL record. He put up 501 yards passing to get it going, and I get it. that People may try to call it stat pattern, but he was doing this, and he's 38. Like, <laughs> it is a, at least half the league that can't do that. Have the lead. It's over, man. It's over for him. It's over, TP. Okay, okay, but look. Okay, we'll look at Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning won a Super Bowl on his way out. He finished that game with 149 yards passing. 
and didn't have none of that. CJ Anderson won the dog on MVP because they were running the crap out of the ball. Like we just like Siri said, all of the quarterbacks that we're thinking about, like we're seeing the decline. Like Ben had a good Wait, run you, out the you, door. You just used back. Peyton looked, Manning's last year as your that was argument. Just one. That was just one. I can talk about his brother too. Now look, Siri named all of them. I said no. Hey, come on, Are you come on. Peyton's last wait, wait, on. Wait, 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 year, he time couldn't off. throw. Time off. Time off. He couldn't throw. Time off. He they right. He they, they had defenses playing up, up on him because he couldn't throw downfield. This is what's happening to Big Ben. He, he's 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 finished. He's finished. Okay, fair fair enough, fair enough. I, I'll let you talk. What could I talk to? Like like you gotta let me finish doing what I'm doing, right? Now at the end of the day, like I said, we've seen a lot of these quarterbacks have heavily declined when they came out, and you're seeing just like Sarah said. If Ben was able to scream, I think things would change. And, and Ben can run. Like, I don't know why he won't take off and get his four to seven yards. He wouldn't do it. So, I feel like this is the start of him leaving, but not that way. Like, like let, let him do something. I want to see him go out with the gun in his hand. You know what I'm saying? I want to see him go out with them kneeling him off the field. And the score was, what, 48 to 37 after spotting him 28. He spotted him 28. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I get it. I understand. And, and just get another quarterback in there that he could, you know, tutor. Because I don't think Mason Rudolph is the guy if they don't get a good quarterback out of the first or second round. Or or uh, Duck or, or Dobbs. Like, these. heck no. Like, I, I don't think so. I'm, I'm not content with saying that. So, hey, pick your poison. Um, there are There is one more situation I wanted to address. I don't know if you guys have more. And this is the situation with Deshaun Watson. Now, it's just like the city of Houston is in ruins. And um, you got Harden leaving. You got Andre Johnson speaking up for Deshaun, said, yo, I'll stick with my guns. I'm going with Deshaun. Forget the organization. And you could tell that Andre was addressing the GM because the GM was the only one that was a part of that organization while Dre was there. And um, Deshaun is ready to go and already picking teams out, i.e. like Miami, and, um, you know, you have Barry throw out that he could potentially go to a team like Pittsburgh, things of that nature. But it really looks like all signs are pointing to him trying to leave. I don't know if Houston will let him go, but I want to see how you guys feel about this one. Um, Barry, I'll come right back to you. Your thoughts on the Deshaun Wilder situation. I'll go to Nick next. Yeah, you know, real quick, I mean, I, I was, you know, writing a blog about this too, and it's like, honestly, man, Deshaun should want out because why Why would you go to him, ask his opinion on who they should bring in as a head coach, then, you know, turn around and, and completely disregard everything he told you. And knowing that Eric Bieniemy is the hot candidate, that's the guy if you want to make your quarterback who had a career year, over 4,800 passing yards, 33 touchdowns, seven interceptions, 24 years old, you want to make that guy happy, bring in the hot offensive coordinator, no, you disregard him and you, you, you're just doing whatever you want to do. And, and, and at that point, they weren't going to bring in the enemy. Now there's a report saying that the enemy is, is actually going to interview him. But why, why disrespect him like that? Why ask his opinion and then just go against it? So, and, and then you traded his boy before that for peanuts on the dollar and, and didn't consult him on that. I mean, and, and then it's, you know, let's be honest, the social justice stuff. They don't like what the owners, you know, he's, he, he does, he's kind of flaky on the social justice and Black Lives Matter, all that stuff. It's a strained relationship. Deshaun, uh, Deshaun Watson might just say F it and not want to come back at all if they don't trade him. So it's an ugly situation. Hopefully it gets better. But you know what? There's a lot of teams, Miami, Chicago, uh, San Francisco, that would, you know, the Detroit, there's a lot of teams, the Jets, that would gladly take this guy and, and, and take that quote-unquote mess off their hands. Okay, we did have Nick drop. Uh, Sirius, your thoughts on the situation with Deshaun Watson in that organization after they just gave him a heavy contract extension? You know what I'm saying? I, I would say this, you know, in, in, in sports you have to do what you need to do or at least make appearance to to, to, to to your stars to, you know, prolong their career and keep their best interests at heart. Uh, Deshaun Watson, for the past three years that I can, that I can remember counting, I could be incorrect, but he was the most sacked on um, one of the most hit quarterbacks in the National Football League. So he doesn't have an offensive line, okay? Then 
you know, your old regime owner, uh, quarterback, uh, coach, GM, or whatever case may be, trading away uh, his best friend and his only weapon. Then you never solidify him with the running game. He comes to you and tells you, listen, this is what I would like. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You don't have to hire him. I, you know, I, I want you to at least have a conversation with this brother, bring him in, interview him. You know, do, you know, show me something. Show and prove. You know what I'm saying? Barry and I are married here. Time, and let's see, you get there one day. But, you know what I'm saying? You want our, our, our spouse to be happy, you have to show and prove. You got to show that you're at least trying. You don't got to, you know, hit the mark all the time, but you got to show that you're trying. Um, and right now the Houston Texas organization is pretty much just gave him the bird. And now that he's threatened to leave, J.J. Watt's not happy. You know what I'm saying? You've got a bunch of people, you know, in Houston uh, not happy. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if he does, you know, get dealt and get moved. You know, I mean, heck, Houston's good with, you know, getting picks from some teams. You know, send his behind right to Pittsburgh, please. Thank you. <laughs> I you. I, I, I wish you, man. I, I done had it never, Matthew. Like, like people are like, Ty, leave Matt alone. And then I got people jumping at me talking about, well, um, there's somebody close to the organization uh, that was near, um, you know, Quinn that said um, all all things point to Stafford trying to come back. I'm like, no, <laughs> like. Please, I have the truck. I have the writing on the side of the truck that says one man in a truck. I'm ready to just go out there and just unload that house and take him wherever he needs to go. Everything. Sofas, everything. I'm I'm ready to go crazy. Like like I don't I don't want no more. I'm done. Um I mean know, PP, there's a strong. lot of teams in this league that would take Deshaun Watson. I think there's maybe seven or eight teams that would not trade for Deshaun. Everyone else is like fair game. Like what, what? Danny, Danny, Bitcoin? Sure. Tra- yeah. Like, it, there's a lot of teams that would take that guy. Right. Uh, I'm not. I'm not mad. Like, I don't believe me. <laughs> and he's a guy that can take off and he can make the throws. That's what I like. I like quarterbacks that can leave and pick up like four to, to ten yards if they can, or be able to throw the ball, not just be a, a one-dimensional quarterback, being a scrambler or a heavy passer, like, you, you have to do more to contribute to the game. And that that's the way that I'm looking at the situation uh, with uh, Deshaun Watson. And he's already saying that he wants to go to Miami. But what it makes it interesting is Tua's there and Fitzpatrick's there, and they want to talk to Fitzpatrick situation or Fitzmagic and, and seeing if he could be the guy or Tua. And they don't know if Tua's the guy. And it's like Tua only played one season. Like, let him get his feet wet, but it's like – does Tua sit behind Deshaun Watson? Do they bring Tua to Houston? Like, that would be interesting to have these guys be that type of threat. But I, I don't know if that's what Flores would want. It, it's interesting to see how this may end up materializing. But Houston, the words of back in the 60s, you have a problem. And if you do unload Deshaun Watson, I, I feel bad in saying this, you are going to leave J.J. Watt sitting in that organization by himself. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not a Texan fan, He's but I am a huge. If, if, if they let J.J. Watt go, then, then contract. <laughs> like, like, contract the organization. You guys are done. Like, like forget it. Just let it all go. You guys, you guys watch. DeAndre go. Cushing left. Uh, uh I'm trying to think of all of the big names that they just got rid of. Like, they, they didn't hang on to anybody. Yeah. It's like they're they not thinking upon the, the, the team's success at all. Like, what agenda are you guys pushing at the end of the day? And um, I, I think this is more or less selfish greed instead of trying to make the organization better. And, and, and a lot of this stuff crumbled in front of uh, Bill O'Brien. You gave a guy too much power that already had a questionable – I really don't want to say questionable resume because he did decent while he was in New England, but while he was on his own, it didn't look good. It didn't look good. By the way, okay. that's the new so, offensive coordinator in Alabama. Um, who went on Alabama? Yeah. I didn't hear that. Say that again. I said Bill O'Brien is now the new offensive coordinator in Alabama. Oh, wow. <laughs> Nick Saban went and yeah. picked them up after Sarkeesian went to Texas. This is going to be very interesting yeah. to see how um, – he transitions to Texas too. If he, if he could go down there and change Texas, because to be honest, it's been I think two or three coaches that went down to Texas and nothing really happened. So I want to see if Arkeesian can put that's that spread. 
Right. If he could put that spread offense into play down there and um, make things happen in Austin, it, it's going to be a tall order. Um, Barry, if there's anything that you'd like to throw out there, please uh, step up to the grill. I'll let you have it. Yeah, I mean, you know, before we get out of here, because we're going to wrap up soon, but, um, yeah, I mean, the Eagles, what are you doing? Why would you no. choose Carson Wentz, Peterson? Why? Because you pay them? Because you gave them a stupid contract? This guy had one bad year the five years. He brought a championship to that town when they were starving for it. They won nothing in Philadelphia. They were... I was basking in the fact that they were losers, and then they finally get a chip, and then you get rid of the guy. After I can understand, you lost. He lost the locker room um, after that nonsense in, in Washington. But I mean, Carson Wentz lost that locker room way before Doug Peterson did, and it was basically a power play. They, you know, they Lori met with 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 Peterson. And it got to the point where Peterson didn't want to be involved with what they, you know, Lori wanted to do with the team. And they went, they last minute said, you know what, you you don't have to come back. And and but to choose that guy, to choose Carson Wentz, this it shows how much stroke Carson Wentz has in that organization, and it's sad because he's done nothing I'm, to the. I'm not. Sh- I'm not sure they chose Carson Wentz. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean here's the deal. What are you like? What are you gonna do? Like, I mean, we got here last do serious. Like, you got you. You're paying this guy all this money. They're, it's clear that they're not going to trade him. They, 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 they're just not. So I'm I not mean, sure that's they're going to have to go. I'm they not sure that's not going to stay. So you're not going to get rid of both well, of them I mean, and get nothing back. I, I I think they might because here's the deal. Like Dougie Peterson could not come back and coach that locker room. Well, I mean, we, okay. we've established that. We spoke about that last week, okay? But also, mm-hmm. you can't have you can't have Jalen Hurts come in and do what he did, okay, and not look to one of these other teams that are going to need a quarterback as soon as the offseason comes around. You know, I mean, obviously, Philip Rivers is going to flirt with retiring. Drew Brees is going to flirt with retiring. You know, there are these other quarterbacks held. Ben Roethlisberger, even though I think he won't retire, may flip over retiring. There are these teams that, you know, are going to need a quarterback that you can move Carson Wentz to. I don't think that they chose Carson Wentz over Doug Peterson. The situation had grown toxic. It's almost like the James Harden and Houston situation. The situation had grown toxic. You can't do what you did as as Carson Wentz, you know, Talk about wanting to be traded, you know, disrespect the coach, you know, single handedly cost your team multiple games, you know, this, that, and the third. Jalen Hurts comes in a rookie and lights your city on fire, and you go back to the dude that wasn't playing good and hasn't played good since he's been hurt, you know, against the LA Rams. You know what I'm saying? I think Carson Wentz is gone. Obviously, Dougie Peterson is gone. I think whomever comes in there is going to be, um, a, 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 a coach that Jalen Hurts can work with, you know, can instill a lot of those RPOs, kind of like what Greg Roman is doing right now in Baltimore, keep an eye on him um, as, as a possible coaching candidate for, you know, filling in a bunch of other of these teams that are looking for coaches currently. Um, you got the guy off of the coordinator in Buffalo who's up for a head coaching job, who's looking to get into head coaching, keep an eye on him as a possible candidate for the Philadelphia Eagles, all these teams are, are, are looking at the next guy. And if you've got a Jalen Hurts, clearly Jalen Hurts, in my opinion, is better than Carson Wentz. So you play the best guy. It doesn't matter what you pay them. You can have somebody take half the contract. The, the, these guys are multi G, so they can figure out how to way to make the money stretch, flip it, spend it, you know, restructure, whatever the case may be. Jalen Hurts is going into the 2021 season as Philadelphia Eagles starting quarterback. Carson Wentz is not going to be in Philadelphia, and it's going to be a whole new regime. I'm going to, I'm going to just say it like this because it's, it's interesting that I, I didn't know Barry would support the Peterson situation because the way that it ended, it got brutal, um, especially within his division. I thought this was the I thought he's the villain. I thought he would be laughing at this situation. Ha 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 ha! He's not even doing that, um, and I get it that. He may have been granted more time because he did bring a Super Bowl there, but the way that it went down and then the Week 17 situation of them potentially trying to win the game, 
and they didn't win the game. It was like the way that he pulled Jalen Hurts because you wanted to get Sudfeld time. Sudfeld is lucky that he's not cut. <laughs> like he, he showed no glimpses of no glimmer of no good play on an NFL field. Like, I think you put Sudfeld in there if everybody's injured. Like, that's the only way that that happens. So, Peterson, I understand that you were a backup quarterback and you you live for the underdog situation. I get it. But you just like it was said previously, I don't know if it was said here in the kitchen, but you lost the locker room. And once you lose the players, and the players wanted to fight you at the end of the game because of the way that you did things, it's extremely questionable. So, that, that's the way I yeah, feel I about can, that. I can laugh. I can laugh about it because at the end of the day, it is the Eagles. It's... <laughs> <laughs> but, there we you know, go. There you go. You know, because listen, I, I'm trying to be objective. I'm trying to put my grown man business together. But at the end of the day, <laughs> the Eagles <laughs> loses. See? Listen, I I hate the Eagles. You know, I hate the Eagles. The only thing you know, you're like, 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 like, you're like, you're like, you're like, you're the Eagles no. are in talks with Adam Gase. Like, you mean to tell me that Adam Gase? Oh, yeah, dude. Make, you, you, talk, you want to talk to him? You want to talk to him? Right, he made the Jets look horrible, and you went and y'all going to talk to Gase? Are y'all out of y'all? Like, like, I don't what do you want to talk okay. to him? You know what? You know what? I, honestly, on the low low, this might be the best thing that the Eagles d- might do all year. Because if you talk to Gates, Gase, you find out everything you need to, you want that you don't want in a coach by talking to Adam Gates. So when you're finished talking, it's like, just get the opposite, and you're golden. That's genius. That's genius. Believable. Uh, unbelievable. There, there's no way I'm even looking at it as that being genius. Like, like, and I get what you're saying by him saying it's genius, but it's like, I, I don't, the Eagles, the Eagles are giving up. And it's like, I'm surprised that, how passionate those Philly fans are that they not link right now, not burning it down. I'm surprised Jessica don't take the car keys from Sirius and get going and go to Philly right now and go crazy. Like, 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 I, I just don't get it. I, I don't get it. She tried I'm, I'm to. I, I had to stop her. You know, I had to stop her because I didn't have money to bail her out of the, you know, the, the Lincoln Jail. I got the bread like that. Malik, Malik <laughs> diaper, so we good. <laughs> and, and, the crazy part is, and the crazy part is that the link, the Lincoln, the link got a dog on jail cell in the stadium, so she'd be right the here. You would know exactly where to go get her. They would know exactly the where to go get her. Degenerate Eagle fan, bunch of degenerates. No, no don't say that about Jess. You can't do. Don't say that about Jess. You better leave her alone. That's, that's my sister-in-law, man. Chill out. No, nah, listen. I, I, I got no, no women, no children. I ain't serious. No, I ain't coming nowhere. No, no, no. Yeah, it's nothing but love. But Eagle fans. I don't. The only thing worse than the Eagles fan is the Cowboys fan. I'm sorry. Unless you boys got something else to throw in the grill, I, I, I'll let you have at it here. Is there something else that you would like to talk about before we get up out of here? No, nah, let's get up out of here, man. Okay, so we, we need plugs and closeouts from each year. Great stuff. Cooked all day, and I love it, man. I, I, I mean, especially I'm not going to lie. The one that I really wanted to get out was the, the Marcus Peters interception. I, man, listen, I couldn't wait to talk about that one because it was like the way that he spun the ball. I, I, like, I've been replaying it on uh, on YouTube just, just to let y'all know. <laughs> when, when he just hey. he looked at the sideline, he just looked at the sideline, he's like, yo, and then he slid it to 50 just to let them know he was down. Yo, he ran to the 50 as fast as he could. And the way that he let the ball go, like it, it was like something out of a, a, a comic book. He, he slid the ball at everybody. They was they were jumping on like they were stepping on dynamite, man. I'm like, man, this is cool. I'd have been burnt. If I, if I was Tennessee, I'd have been burnt. I'd have been fine, 20. I'd have been, <laughs> look, I'd have been kicked out the game. He's ejected and everything. But if I was – um. South Tennessee, I'd have probably just like Terry said, the Randy Moss Moon, like everything would have happened. It all would have happened. But I need plugs and closeouts from each of you. Serious, you already know how to shut this thing down and make sure you tell Jess I love yeah, her, yeah. man. Leave, leave those yeah. people alone. Man, it's your boy, Serious, repping that 412 and 703. Such a pleasure to be here with you guys on another edition uh, of the Sports City Seth production, man. Um, 
I'm going to say this, man. I'm going to say this, man. You know what? We we, we, we here at Sports City, we, we talk sports. Um, and, you know, that, that that's primarily our business. However, I do want to urge everybody to be safe out there, man. Wear your mask. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Keep your social distancing, man. Be aware of your surroundings. You know what I'm saying? We live in a crazy world right now. Be aware of your surroundings, man. I had a friend of mine get caught up in some stuff and, um, you got to deal with some business, but be aware of your surroundings, man. I love you guys, man. Hopefully, we catch you guys on Sunday. Um, my picks this weekend, man. My picks for Saturday. Oh, uh, oh that's right. That's the... right. Damn. Oh, goodness. Wait, wait. Hold on. I mean, yeah. See, you didn't. We, we talking so good. <laughs> Look, these dudes, they get on my nerves. That's who these dudes. I'm supposed to up here get the pick. <laughs> so, for at least Saturday, so it's two games Saturday. It's the Rams and Packers and Ravens Bills. All right, and so knowing you, you're going to take you our picks and go to Vegas or something, right, and not not share the wealth. Clear, you you don't, don't, about don't, to don't you get me started. Don't, listen, don't you get me started. I'm, I'm, I'm actually accepting for that I didn't get the topic out here to get the picks from you. <laughs> and you, Sirius, Nas, Eric, all of y'all, I'm up here uh, like, I'm, and I'm go. up here, you know the superhero go. that I am. I'm up here being nice. I'm like, please, can y'all help me, please? They all sat there laughing with the with the Barry laugh. <laughs> they high five <laughs> <laughs> and did me dirty. Yeah, with the crack of treated me like, no, a, treated me like a wet food fan. <laughs> That's who technically the not what happened, folks. My man, my, my, my man's hearing the blood and telling stories. We got caught up in a Kyrie Irving discussion, and what he asked us got lost in the sauce. Exactly. And if y'all want to if y'all want, eat it. If y'all want to get technical, that's what happened. And, you know, my man Thomas out there, you know, city. birthday bubble and city. whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Right, I got right. lost in the yeah, yeah, I'm waiting for my invite to Vegas. I didn't foul, get invited. This is, this, wait, this is how foul they would do me on my birthday. I wouldn't do this in the middle of February 27th. I wouldn't do that. If, 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 if February 27th came around, seriously, like, yo, Ty, hold me down. I need something. Yeah, I got him. I got him. I know his birthday, but I ain't even looking at it. You feel me? This is what I do. You see what I'm saying? And then they keep popping off how I pop the bottle of bubbly. Yeah, I do it like what I'm I'm, I'm living, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, but, but besides that, like, your whole town. That's all I asked for. I was like, okay, so so get your picks out before I, I wake this dog on kitchen up again. I, I start letting these pots and pans fly. So I need the Rams Packers, yeah, the Packers are favored by the Packers are favored by six and a half, and it's supposed to snow. And the Ravens Jimmy are Jimmy Jimmy. And Buffalo is favored, Buffalo favored by two and a half. It's supposed to snow there, too. You know what? I'm going with the Baltimore Ravens here. It, it pays me to do that. Um, but you know what? This is a team that's playing extremely hot right now. Um, I, 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing with Buffalo. They played exceptionally well versus an opponent that they should necessarily be in the, in the Indianapolis Colts. The Baltimore Ravens have what I have to call championship pedigree. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got two teams in the playoffs this year who ain't been there since I was literally, you know, pulling girls off monkey bars in, 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 in fifth grade. You know, the Cleveland Browns are in the playoffs, second round. Buffalo Bills are in the playoffs, second round. Um, I'm going with the Baltimore Ravens. And I'm going with the Green Bay Packers on Saturday. Okay. And in a closeout. Oh, you already gave the closeout. You already gave the closeout. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I gave. Yeah. Rams, Barry. <laughs> Barry, Rams or Packers. And it's funny that the Rams are favored by six and a half, but the over under sitting at forty five and a half. This is funny. Um Barry, I need a closeout, but I also need the picks for both games, at least for Saturday. We'll do Sunday on the brunch. Yeah, if I, I if I can make it to the brunch, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll take the Packers. I'll take the points. Um, I'll take the Bills. I'll, I'll, I'll lay, I mean, well, I'm laying the points with the Packers and the Bills, so I'll take them both. I think the Bills um, at home in the snow. Uh, just uh, watch, not watch. Uh, Jackson's first game uh, in the snow. Um, it's going to be a tough one for him. So I like the I like the home um, favorites, the, the home favorites in these games. Lay the points. Um, listen, another great show. With the chefs, like we said, we got big things popping. Uh, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of a lot of plans in, in motion. Uh, excited to be a part of the family. Uh, TP, you know, we got we got we to gotta do a, a thing. 
uh, even though you're so-called hero, you're a villain at heart, just like me. I'm a villain. Listen, I, I-, I watch G.I. Joe. I root for Cobra. I, I watch Scarface. I root for Sosa. So I- I- I'm the villain, you know, and the villain's all of us. The villain's you, the villain's me. So uh, on that note, I'm out. Peace, villain. See, that's that's the problem with him, America, and people around the world, since this is the World Wide Web, and I, I'm glad everybody around the globe that listens to us. But this is what he tried to infuse me with, like try to push me as the bad guy. The only thing I said was, like, the karma of the Ravens getting back at the Titans, and he tried to pull me in. It was like I got to push this guy off of me as bad as he wants me to be. He put his sunglasses on and said, well, well, well. Like, And, and you know, Neil, I got to beat him up. I got to put on my long trench coat and, and do the – the fan off block and look at the numbers in his face. Cause I can see the numbers in Barry face. Like I don't even see skin no more. Like I see digits. I see computer screens. I see Sirius back there with computer numbers on his face. And I got to jump in Barry body and make this dude explode. That's what I do, man. This is how I do. I saved the world. I done took off my blazer, loosened up the tie, stepped outside the kitchen. Timeless is alive. There's no way I'm going against the Rams in green Bay. I mean, I mean, there's no way I'm going for the Rams in Green Bay. I, I'm going with Rodgers by far. I feel like Rodgers gonna run the scoreboard up with the snow, with the snow. Unless the Rams, unless Jalen, unless Ramsey could find out the remedy to slow down Devontae Adams, I'm not going away from that. I think that 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 Rodgers at Adams tandem is is one of the best that we've seen in the league. And um, Lamar, uh, you know what? As much as I want you to win this game, I think the Bills are destined to push the envelope. I'm going to go with the Bills with Barry also. I, 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 I want to see Lamar push the envelope and everybody picking on him. Oh, he ain't got a playoff win. He got the playoff win. But I think the buck stops here unless he goes crazy on that turf. If, if the Buffalo Bills can't stop him on his turf, it'll be a wild night in Buffalo. Sports City, we, are got, a lot, we got a lot of stuff going on. That is the truth. Um, stay tuned. The, the message will get out to the people on what we got going on in Sports City. We got additions coming in and so on and so forth. I don't want to let too much out the bag because I know how karma works, so I'm going to chill and keep my mouth shut. But on that note, tell a friend to tell a friend that it's the chefs again, and if they don't know, now they know. <laughs>